Okay. Uh, today we'd like to talk about VOIP phishing and security and some very powerful security solutions to handle this kind of area. Uh, one of the issues about cybercrime and particularly this area is that it's really expanding and growing very fast due to the technology. Uh, there's a couple of very important things to consider. First, uh, the networks are expanding. The networks really include a lot of different uh, different mechanisms, different ways from ADSL to Wi-Fi to 3G, many, many different uh, networks and technologies. It makes it very complicated to track this sort of crime. Second thing is that consumers have all kinds of mobile devices available now, from smartphone to Blackberry to iPad to iPhone, tablets, there's many kinds of devices. Many of these devices now have a full OS such as Android and that opens up the possibility for more viruses and more easy to get in and hack something. So what the result is is that cyberspace has become a really popular platform for crime rings to get in with high-tech capability and break into these environments and get to the end users and commit various kinds of fraud. So it's really a, a large area where the criminals are getting into this very high-tech area and breaking in and really committing a lot of fraud and doing a lot of damage. It's also a very important new area for law enforcement staff to get in and use new technology to investigate and to catch this kind of problems very early on. And this um, whole kind of technology is a new area for example, in Decision Group eDetective, it's a, cap it's a capability to get in and analyze these kind of very complicated areas and get the evidence that's needed. So VIP phishing is the most rampant and one of the most harmful kinds of cyber crime. First, in terms of VOIP phishing, Trillions of dollars are lost in the world every year. It uses the human nature. It uses simple things like a regular phone to get access to somebody's ATM bank account. Uh, the fraud and the criminals, the victims are in different states, even different countries. So it's really hard to analyze. The criminals have very well-defined high-tech organizations. There's a lot of a uh, kind of anonymous kind of activity where that it's hard to trace back to the uh, the criminals. And then there's a lot of links and very complex routing, which means it's hard to get through and trace the real. So what that means is it's very hard to conduct investigation by the traditional way for these kind of crimes. For the criminal pattern, it's a very complicated pattern. If you look at kind of a typical pattern, a fraud group may be in one country. So in the slide number one, uh, there may be a criminal group in the Philippines. They get access through a VOIP gateway. Maybe they go through Hong Kong. And then maybe they hide their phone number or change the phone number and then eventually reach the target victim maybe in South Korea or China or Taiwan. And so it's a multinational sort of crime. It makes it even more difficult to catch and to prosecute. There's kind of a supply chain for this kind of fraud. Uh, there's a, a typical pattern of kind of how the, the data is collected and how the, the crime works. First, um, there are victims that maybe they left their personal data in an e-commerce website or maybe a hacker stole their personal data from a bank or from a brokerage or some other sort of company, maybe a, a company like Amazon or something. So every day you hear of places where that maybe 30,000 customers data has been stolen. Second point, the hacker collects this kind of stolen you know, personal data uh, either by breaking in, hacking into one of these companies or systems and then uh, basically sells that confidential information to a hacker group. 
It might be customer lists, names, you know, account numbers or phone numbers, other sorts of things. Okay, next, a cybercrime has a call center and they'll start to call up people and they'll use this information and say, hi, I'm calling from Bank of America. Your account number 456 has an illegal entry. Uh, let me help you. Uh, what is your password or something like that? Or uh, they will get to the criminal, I mean, they'll get to the victim and give the victim instructions to uh, wire them money from an ATM. And if the victim is not so clever, they may not realize that they're wiring all of their balance to some other account. And so this kind of fraud is really dangerous because it, it can affect people that are not even using a computer. So it's really a substantial amount of loss. <clears throat> the typical kind of investigation for this sort of crime is, is really difficult. Um, in this particular case study, there is a criminal ring that has actually connections or partners or victims or uh, criminals in five different countries. They caused billions of dollars lost in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Korea within two years. There was the actual the fraud group. There are, also, there are also some hackers involved that got some personal data in the first place. And then there's all these different services like the telecom service providers and such. Now, <clears throat> in terms of actually catching the fraud, the police in the Philippines, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and China all worked together and made a very detailed data analysis for eight months. Now, this would normally be very, very difficult. What made it much easier was that they used the decision group eDetective software for lawful interception, which is a very powerful tool that can actually catch a lot of this internal data, the packets and the information going back and forth through the network, and then reassemble and repack uh, this kind of data back into meaningful information and allow the police or the lawful administrators to sort through it, search it, and collect information and evidence. So it's a powerful tool to fight this kind of crime. Now this picture is a fairly complicated diagram it just shows you how complicated this kind of cybercrime can be. Um, there's a lot of uh, subtle details and complexity, so it's not necessarily easy to trace by any other way. The only way to catch this kind of crime effectively is to use a powerful tool like our eDetective to get in and really capture the information at the source in the network. And not only to capture it, but to save it. So, for example, on the right, you could see in the Philippines there was a fraud group, and then they're using the internet, they're going through Hong Kong, and then eventually they're getting to some customer on the left side that might be in a different country, the final end victims. The red arrows are places where that we can intercept the data and record all of those little packets and pieces of data and then assemble them back into meaningful data so that law enforcement can actually review it and collect evidence. Now it's very important to be able to collect the solid digital evidence because remember a lot of this is by voice and so normally there wouldn't be any record and there wouldn't be any way to trace back and even if you could catch somebody there might not be hard evidence. But using our eDetective software we could actually get the really hard evidence, the real data, and really trace back and find out who it was and where they were. In this case study, um, the, the groups together, the police of the Philippines, Taiwan, and China, working together, they could arrest 70 fraud suspects in the Philippines, and they could arrest 30 suspects in Taipei, 20 suspects in China. So this is a really powerful example of transnational cooperation and it's a really good example of the power of our e-detective software to be able to sort out and catch this kind of cyber crime and actually lead to the arrest and the result. <clears throat> now for this kind of a case study, 
uh, the solutions that enable this kind of a closure to really catch these criminals and really solve this case. Basically, what was used was the tactical VOIP interception software called eDetective. This is one of our main software to really analyze the detail packets and information going across a network and then assemble these back into meaningful data that we can use to collect evidence and review and trace and so on. It also used HTTPS and SSL uh, package called ED2S, which basically breaks the encryption and allows us to get the data even if it's been encrypted. And then the other, other parts of this is our LI platform and then centralized management and data retention. What that means is that we can collect all of this data over eight months and we can have it presented to law enforcement in a very searchable and usable way where that they can go in and search on different criteria, they can look at it different ways, they can collect certain pieces and have all the hard evidence right there. And then the other parts that were involved is consulting service from uh, DG and this allows us to really help the customers use the products much more strongly and get better results. And then finally customization service because in every large project like this there'll be special requirements and we can get in and work with the customer and try to make things more fit into their environment and do more what they need to do. Uh, we also offer professional training for law enforcement and this is very important to get the most power out of these powerful tools. We have some very powerful software tools but to use them in the best way, of course, more training can help become more powerful in terms of using them. So <clears throat> the key here is that we have some very uh, experienced trainers and hands-on courses and then we can actually provide some really valuable you know, small training courses where that it's really hands-on and where your people can really get some skills in terms of how to use these tools the best way. Um, basically, there's a couple of different courses. Uh, for example, packet forensic analysis training on the right basically gives some training in terms of how to use all this data, how to search it, how to know what's the power of these tools, how to use all the special features so that you can collect the most evidence and the most valuable data. Okay. And what we provide, um, basically consulting is a very important thing. We can provide consulting with very clear objectives. We can provide the, the right solutions. We can modify the solution to fit your environment. We can do assessments for vulnerability. We can make a deployment plan. And then we can also do training and consulting related to data analysis and text mining. From a training point of view, we can train the trainer, we can train the officials, the administrators, so you can get maximum value out of our powerful software. For future development plan, uh, we have technology updates from time to time. From time to time, we can offer additional courses that provide you with newer updates in terms of our technology. We can provide development to integrate with your back-end systems in your particular organizations. A partner strategy is very important to treat this as a partner and we rely on our partners for really the best implementation, the most powerful solution actually in the field. We have three kinds of partners that we might kind of categorize. One is OEM or ODM customers. Those are typically customers like a global solution provider, software house, where they're selling our solution. And we have system integrators, maybe IT service provider, uh, maybe project management, where that they're providing our service as part of their big project. And then we have alliance partners, such as consulting firms, legal service fir firms, where that they are also providing our product as a piece of their overall package for their customers. So the key is that this is the way we can provide the best local support and service through our trustful partners. 
from a reference point of view, um, Decision Group has many, many customers in really a lot of countries in the world, you know, perhaps more than 40 or 50 different countries. Uh, we have projects and customers with the police in Taiwan and China, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, Singapore, many, many areas. And we have been involved in many successful uh, cyber investigations. And we really have this kind of powerful tool. And we have this motivation to help as much as we can to help the law enforcement and all of their efforts. Thank you very much. Okay.